and why? It's a trend that's really starting to happen at the city level in certain parts of California. Uh, the first city a couple months ago was uh, was Berkeley up in the Bay Area, which passed a, a resolution at city council basically saying no more gas in uh, most new buildings. So meaning when you when you construct a new uh, a new home or a new office building of, of whatever source, uh, not allowed to, to have gas hookups, to have gas heating, gas cooking, that sort of thing. A couple other cities have, have taken similar steps, but something that's starting to get talked about at the, the state policy level as well, there have been bills proposed and regulations considered that would do similar things at the state level, although there's nothing, uh, nothing like that yet. Traditionally, we have seen natural gas portrayed as the clean fossil fuel, so why the push to phase it out? Historically, natural gas has been seen as cleaner than coal in terms of how much greenhouse gas pollution gets gets emitted when you burn coal versus when you burn gas. Well, two things have happened. One in California is that we've mostly phased out coal already, and so the you know the folks, the policymakers, the activists who made that push to get rid of coal have now looked and said, well, gas is now the you know the largest source of electricity in California. Gas from buildings is becoming a larger source of our emissions as we tamp down emissions from from other places. So it's it sort of become time to address that. The other thing that's happened is there's just been a lot more science about methane emissions from natural gas infrastructure, which uh, to an extent, although how much is, is debated, but to an extent uh, takes away some of the climate um, favorability it has over coal. Southern California Gas points to the work it's doing with something called renewable gas, saying that it can help reduce carbon emissions that way. What is renewable gas and what are its pluses and minuses? Renewable gas is basically these sources of, of gas that you can get from sources besides digging it up out of the ground like we've traditionally done. So at dairy farms and landfills and sewage treatment facilities, these types of industrial and, and farming facilities just emit methane into the atmosphere as part of uh, the process of those things happening. It's, it's a pretty big source of climate pollution, actually, because this stuff is going up into the atmosphere. And so CalGas says that what they're beginning to do is, is capture that methane, that renewable gas from these sources um, and put it into their pipelines to replace some of the, the fossil fuel natural gas that they've got. So I could imagine that some people would say, hey, you know, that's a plus for the environment. Uh, what do critics of renewable gas have to say about that? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky question. There, there are sort of a lot of uncertainties that exist over how much renewable gas you can actually get out of the pipelines and replace it with this so-called renewable gas. Also questions about how much it's going to cost. Uh, there have been some studies that have done that have at least so far shown that electrification, so replacing gas appliances in the home with electric versions would, would probably end up being quite a bit cheaper than replacing all the fossil gas with renewable gas. Southern California Gas and other supporters of natural gas say that transitioning to electricity would be expensive for existing homes and businesses. That's a lot of appliances to replace. They also say that pushing all electric housing and other buildings would make the state more dependent on the electrical grid. Is there any truth to that? There's definitely truth to some of that, and it sort of depends on how you look at it. If the idea from advocates of electrification was you know, sort of go into everyone's homes and businesses tomorrow and tear out the gas appliances and, and make people pay to put electric versions in. Obviously, that would be a, a, bitty, a pretty big problem and, and unpopular with a lot of people. I think the way that they're trying to frame it or the way they're looking at it is that over time, you know, everyone's gas furnace breaks down eventually, um, you know, stoves break down. You, you, you know, sort of have a regular life cycle of these appliances where eventually you're going to need to make some kind of investment in them. And if, you know, the market is developed enough for the electric alternatives, you know, potentially that could be something where, you know, it's either cost neutral or, you know, not that big a difference. Maybe there could be incentives from the state or from electric utilities to go in that direction instead. So they're you know, definitely not saying that cost isn't going to end up being an issue. I mean, with regards to the, the other half of that reliance on the electric grid, yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing this right now with the public safety power shutoffs where PG&E and Southern California Edison have been shutting down power to prevent wildfires from sparking. There's a lot of nuance to that, but one point to sort of keep in mind there is everyone sort of sees the public safety power shutoffs as at least a relatively temporary phenomenon. I mean, PG&E has talked about doing that for, you know, at the most up to 10 years, but these long-term questions about potentially getting gas off the grid, those are longer term than 10-year than questions.
Sammy Roth is an energy reporter for the LA Times. He says phasing out natural gas would be a lot tougher and more expensive for businesses and homeowners than the energy transitions the state has made so far. And he says there's still some debate about whether it's a good approach to take. You're listening to KCRW.